As one TV show famously put it, space is the final frontier. Sure, life on Earth is great and all, but eventually we're going to use up all of this planet's resources. If the human race wants to survive, then we have to figure out where we're going to go from here. Or maybe the Earth will overpopulate and force us to consider living on another planet. Right now, Mars seems to be the most viable option. Elon Musk, one of the most incredible minds in the world, has looked up to the stars and set his sights on the red planet. Stick around until the end to find out how much Elon plans on charging to relocate people to Mars. Before we get started, take a moment to subscribe to The Riches by clicking on that red subscribe button. While you're at it, be sure to give this video a like too. Now this is how Tesla's Elon Musk plans to colonize Mars. Before we can truly dive into Elon Musk's incredible plans, we have to get to know the brilliant mind himself. He was born on June 28, 1971 in Pretoria, South Africa. As a child, he already showed signs of being smarter than the average person. According to his dear old dad, he was always an introvert thinker. For example, instead of playing sports and partying, Elon could be found in the library reading as many books as he could find. The poor kid was also relentlessly bullied during his school days. He was even once sent to the hospital because the bullies had done him in so badly. After he graduated from high school, he went to college in Canada for a few years, but he finished off his studies at the University of Pennsylvania. He got degrees in both physics and economics, which makes perfect sense for the life that Elon would take on. He wanted to get his PhD from Stanford, but he opted out of the school after two days because he wanted to give the internet boom a try. He started a few online companies and even became the CEO of PayPal briefly. As we know now, he is the CEO of Tesla, along with being the founder, CEO, and lead designer of SpaceX. Given that Elon is so smart and has a net worth in the billions, he has endless resources when it comes to colonizing Mars. Under his company SpaceX, Elon released his plans for this endeavor in a talk that he gave back in October 2017. He even published an academic paper on the matter. According to his plans, the colonization of Mars should involve one million people, which is about the size of a large city. The first thing he wants to do, which will be the foundation of colonizing Mars, is to build a starship. If that doesn't sound familiar to you, it was previously known as the Big Falcon Rocket or the BFR. The Starship will be a 35-story space vehicle that he had planned to start building at the beginning of 2018. While we have no word on when exactly it'll be completed, Elon intends to launch the first commercial Starship in 2023. Elon's specialty is transportation and technology, so he wants to make sure that colonizers can get around with state-of-the-art space vehicles. Not not only will his starship provide flights to Mars, but he hopes to also use the spaceship for high-speed transportation around the world. And he's not joking about the high-speed part. For example, a trip from Los Angeles to New York City would only take about 25 minutes. And since he's using the technology from the Mars Starship as a basis, Elon figured out a way to use material that's already at his disposal for this endeavor. We just laid a lot of information out for you, so let's break it down for you a little more. First, let's talk about the Starship. While formally it is known as the Big Falcon Rocket, Elon actually called it the Big Effin' Rocket. Sorry kiddos, we had to censor the cuss word in there. We already know the rocket will be about 35 stories, but let's take a look at some of the other numbers. It will be able to transport about 100 people. What will be truly remarkable about the Starship is that it will be reusable, making travel to Mars much more economical. There will be 35,000 cubic feet of pressurized space in Inside, making the Starship surprisingly roomy. The payload itself will be about 180 feet long, which is 10 times bigger than the Space Shuttle's living quarters. At the front of the Starship will be two actuated rocket fins, and there will be three in the back. There will also be 31 Raptor engines that will not only propel the Starship to Mars, but will also give it a controlled landing via supersonic retro propulsion. According to Elon, the VFR is designed to land anywhere in the solar system. System. Before we go further with all the specs, in order to fully understand Elon's plans for colonizing Mars, we have to understand why he wants to do it. 
Simply put, Elon thinks that humans can be a multi-planetary species, but more importantly, it would ensure the survival of the human race should there ever be a third world war. What concerns a lot of people these days is the fact that nuclear tensions are on the rise. According to Elon, Mars is just far enough away from the Earth that should there be nuclear warfare, the red planet wouldn't be negatively affected by it. This would be more efficient than attempting a moon base because the moon is reportedly too close to the Earth to not feel some nuclear impact. So this means that Mars wins when it comes to the battle of where will humans live. Elon also has a theory that unregulated artificial intelligence is more likely to lead to the demise of humans than a third world war involving nuclear arms. In fact, a third world war would most likely involve AIs trying to take over the world. But basically, if and when the next world war happens, Earth will be plunged into the dark ages, and Elon wants to be prepared. What is also necessary in the plans for colonizing Mars is the fact that Elon needs money to pay for it. Even though SpaceX seems to have a lot of money, they're investing in some of the most expensive endeavors. If you want to get a trip on the Starship and relocate to Mars, it's going to cost you a lot of money. According to Elon's academic paper, the optimistic cost will be about $10 billion per person. In case you're wondering, Elon is well aware that a price tag like that won't help the survival of mankind. But if you want to compare this ticket to the Apollo moon missions of the past, that program cost about $100 to $200 billion in today's dollars, and we only sent 12 people to the moon. Granted, NASA was getting some funding from the government, but Elon doesn't want the mission to Mars to be a survival of the richest sort of situation. This is why Elon wants to make the Starship as cost-effective as possible, along with being efficient. His goal is to get the cost down to the average median home price, which is about $200,000. We can already see it now. Instead of financing for buying a house, people will be financing to pay for their relocation to Mars. It doesn't sound too crazy when we put it that way, now does it? Now, while Elon has talked a lot about the technology of how we will get to Mars and how we will pay for it, he hasn't spoken a lot about what will happen once humans are there. The first concern is, how will we even breathe? Last we checked, Mars isn't so plentiful in the realm of oxygen. Even though Elon has been mum about the technology behind living on Mars safely, he has said that he believes people will be able to live a life similar to the ones they're living on Earth. He's even joked about having bars on Mars, making a joke out of the rhyme, the Mars bar. Like, the candy bar, get it? Yeah, we know, such a dad joke. He also envisions the colony having restaurants, pizza joints, and giving Mars inhabitants the ability to have fully-fledged social lives. The biggest thing that people have to keep in mind when they decide to move to Mars is that there's no promise that they will ever be able to return to Earth. At least that's the case for the early stages. When looking at the simulation photos, it seems that people will be living under a dome, which we assume will be pumped with oxygen and pressurized so that they can live safely. Another issue that has been brought up to Elon is deep space radiation, solar flares, and the fact that Mars only has 38% of the Earth's gravity. Given that the word radiation gives a lot of people concern, that would be something you think Elon would tackle head on. However, in his public talks about the Mars colonization project, he has said that he doesn't think it's too big of a deal. The other concern is the difference in gravity. We humans have been conditioned to live within our current gravity situation, and our bones and muscles are developed to survive in this climate. With only 38% of the Earth's gravity, Mars inhabitants will risk losing muscle and bone density as they adjust to life on Mars. Also, Elon has stated that the first colonizers have to be willing to face the end of their life as they embark on what is essentially a test project. The project could end up being a total failure, but we have a hunch that as the Starship nears completion and the timeline progresses, we'll be hearing more from Elon on how exactly people are going to survive. Not only does Elon want to colonize Mars in case another world war breaks out, he also likes the challenge. He's well aware of the physical and financial risk of it all. Given that SpaceX has less than a 10% chance of actually pulling this off, Elon doesn't want to waste the investor's money if it's not going to work out. So the fact that he's working so hard to make this a reality tells you something right there. He's also striving to accomplish Mars colonization by the end of his lifetime because he wants to move there himself. 
Well, he claims that there's a 70% chance that he'll move there himself. Elon can certainly afford the hefty price ticket for the Starship, but hopefully he'd get some sort of freebie for, you know, being the guy in charge. With this in mind, Elon does believe that this endeavor can happen in his lifetime. Considering that cargo missions might start as soon as 2020, and missions with actual humans are scheduled to start in 2024, this seems like it can all happen in less than a decade away. As we mentioned before, there's a lot for him to consider beyond perfecting the Starship technology. Not only do people need a place to live, but they also need hospitals, a food source, water, playgrounds for their children, and more. Bill Nye, who is a huge fan of Elon, does have his reservations. He compares Mars to Antarctica. It's a good place to go for research, but you don't go there to live your daily life or to raise a family. And in Antarctica, at least there's oxygen for you to breathe. Mars doesn't have that, so our favorite science guy doesn't seem to be on board with a Mars colony just yet. He sees it as good for science fiction, but bad for real life. We just did a lot of talking about how Elon plans to colonize Mars, but what about the rest of the solar system? If the Starship can take us to Mars, couldn't it take us to other planets nearby? The short answer is yes. And if you think this is a new thought for Elon, think again. He's already thinking about how these rockets will make us more versatile around the solar system, and how we can go planet hopping or moon hopping, so to speak. The fun doesn't have to stop at Mars. He's envisioning trips around other planets like Jupiter and Saturn. While landing on these planets wouldn't be feasible, wouldn't it be amazing to fly around planets that we've only ever seen in textbooks and on the internet? Elon even thinks he can create a propellant depot on the asteroid belt or on one of Jupiter's moons. This sounds an awful lot like what we've seen on shows like Futurama and the Jetsons. While Elon wants to make Mars a new home for humans, he's truly looking beyond Mars when it comes to the future of mankind's relationship with space. What do you think of Elon's plan to colonize Mars? Would you want to move to Mars forever? Tell us your thoughts in the comments below. We know your thoughts will be out of this world. Too cheesy? Alright. Before you go, please don't forget to subscribe for more awesome videos from the richest. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.